high school very well. That's the last joke I told. Um, so I talk a lot about in my bit lately about becoming a father because a couple months ago my little girl was born. But I've been told by a bunch of friends because I told them this story that I should tell how well, we, me and my fiance right there in the front row believe. Give her up for my fiance right in the front row, please. Yeah, she's good looking and hasn't actually had sex with me. It's wonderful. Wait at the camera. <laughs> But no, um, how we believe we actually conceived our daughter was um, I went out partying with my friends, she went out partying with her friends, I came home, she came home much later fucking crying, I don't know why, because chicks cry when they're drunk, it's, it's just in the concoction, but, so she comes home crying, and I tell her to tell me what's wrong, and she literally told me every little fucking detail of her night, like, <laughs> right down to the second, like, how many drinks she had, what she was drinking, but... So, of course, afterwards, she goes and I'm like, okay, well, sweetie, it's okay. I'm not mad at you. Let's just go to bed. I was like, oh, well, I was hoping we could have sex. Like, we can always, always have sex. But she did that really cute, really sexy thing that girls do. I was about to put the condom on. She gave me that little bit. Do you have to? And, of course, I was no. No, I don't fucking have to. And so, nine months later, I'm a dad and am finally getting over that parental paranoia. Because for those who don't have kids, parental paranoia is when you, like, just fucking sit at Cribside and just watch them breathe. It's like, is she breathing all right? When's the last time she will? No, I talked to her last time. No, of course she's breathing. Let's just fucking... Yeah, there, there, she, there she goes. There she goes. It's when you, like, fucking wake up from a dead sleep because she starts crying. You've got, you've got blankets and pamphlets and bandages and you're working. Like, how do you CPR an infant? How do you CPR an infant? She's having a shit. <laughs> She's just having shit. <laughs> Wonderful, I got one person <laughs> left at that. But so, as Stephen so beautifully put, I am from Brantford, and I'm very, very happy to be raising my daughter in this wonderful gem that is Brantford. Because we only have one of the highest teen pregnancies, the highest substance, of, one of the highest substances abuse, and the most fast food per capita. But we're voted the happiest in the province. Well, when you really break it down and think about it, of course we're the fucking happiest in the province, because why? Because we're getting laid, we're getting stoned, we're getting drunk, we're eating fast food, no one really gives a fuck. Who wouldn't be happy with us? I saw like this. <laughs> Speaking of fast food, just, we do, we have more fast food per fuck, we have more fucking fast food than we do people. There's more fast food in the city than per people. I've determined that this is because this is where Canada has decided they want fat people to come to die. This is the elephant graveyard of the country. Just, oh, that Wendy's was fantastic. You know, could go with that? A nice coffee. And, oh, look, there's a Dairy Queen. Let's get an ice cream. You know, go with good great Dairy Queen? Taco Bell? <laughs> but no, it's, and so I'm, I, 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 I read from Bradford gives me a lot of good material because if you didn't know, uh, a hero of mine, Phil Hartman, is from Bradford. And for those who, who, suck and don't know who Phil Hartman is. Phil Hartman is the guy who voiced Troy McClure in The Simpsons. That's his most noticeable role. And I read up a little bit that Troy McClure's career, like in The Simpsons, was based on Hartman's career, very loosely. And I just thought, oh, so that's not, that in itself isn't funny. But I'm sitting there fucking wasted nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday watching The Simpsons, usual Monday. And I'm sitting there and the episode of The Simpsons came on with you know, the sex ed video, and Mr. Bob was like, she's faking it. It's <laughs> just a sex ed video. And I just thought to myself, I couldn't picture Phil Hartman doing anything, anything pornographic, unless it was terrible, terrible spoof porn. Just like, you know it, baby. Let's get down hot. I'm Phil Hartman, and I'm Phil Hartman. You might remember me from such pornographic material as Pocahontas and Wiggles. <laughs> I don't see it happening, and speaking of dick and balls and porn, that seems to be the theme tonight, and that's what the girl in the back wants to hear. It's like, I don't want to hear about dick! She's laughing, see? No denial. But speaking of which, um, it leaves me with a joke that my friends love. It's, um, I think that the movie 300 would have sold so much better if it was historically accurate. Not because I think people care about historical accuracy in cinema, but every woman in here would pay extra to see Gerard Butler fuck a dude. 
She, she looked up as soon as I said it. Just continue. <laughs> no, if you didn't know, the Spartans, when they went into battle, they wore, like, the bracers, the greaves, the shield, the helmet, and that was fucking it. There was no leather speedo going on when, when the Spartans went into battle. That was just so the movie wasn't rated R. And that would fucking sell thousands of copies, just women be rewind. Pour me more wine, Lear. Rewind. Rewind. <laughs> Completely changed the dynamic of the movie. Those fight scenes just... <laughs> little helicopter for the lady in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're all in a good mood tonight. That's fantastic, but... Speaking of porn and shit the women like to watch, you ever scrolling when you're on YouPorn, YouPornHub, whatever the fuck you use? I'm not asking you to profess what you use, but when you use it, you're just sitting there and you see something really fucking weird and outrageous, like, oh, Charity Banks, 32 dudes, and a horse. Because <laughs> you have to know. You've seen it. You now have to know, because you're going to be sitting there at work dealing with customers, flipping pizza, just like, shit work and get fired. It's torn. It's terrible. But on the topic of sex and women, um, this will be my last joke for the evening. I promise. I'm sorry. But I don't understand fetishes. Fetishes do not appeal to me whatsoever. Like, I don't get being choked. I don't get the leather shit. I don't get being called Charmander. This just... <laughs> I was with a girl that seriously wanted me. I was just, I was just fucking her and she's like, call me Charmander. Charmander. Char. I'm like... We're, we're done here. <laughs> just, I couldn't do it. Because how do you continue that? Just like, um, 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 fuck it, squirtle, squirtle, I win. Just, you finish Blastoise on her face. It's fantastic. <laughs> but another thing is just, when people take that into weird shit, like, did you know there's Scooby-Doo porn? I found it. <laughs> it's Scooby-Doo porn. It stars Brie Olsen. She's fantastic. But... There is Scooby-Doo porn. What's, like, the only, uh, the only thing I can think comparable is when I was tormenting a friend of mine. She's wearing a corset. She's like, this sucks. I don't like wearing a corset. And I'm like, why? I fucking love it. Because I can't masturbate like this. How am I going to reach? So I'm just like, well, do it Winnie the Pooh style. Just, oh, down, there we go, and up, down, there we go. <laughs> or, <laughs> the, or people who are just like, oh, 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 what, what, what? <laughs> 